Let's talk about dark skies. If you really want to see the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights, and you want to see a spectacular dance with all the definition and movement and color that you expect from popular media, you really need to find the darkest skies you possibly can. And the sad fact is that there aren't that many dark skies left in some parts of the world and the country. In fact, the U.S., particularly on the East Coast or in the Midwest, is pretty bad. So I started on this page, which is an article about the Bortle scale. The Bortle scale is um, <clears throat> a scale that was created to kind of talk about dark skies and how when we add artificial lights and light pollution, we can start to lose the visual of our stars, our Milky Way, and even the Northern Lights, the closer we get to light pollution. This scale was invented by John Bortle in 2001, appearing in a Sky and Telescope article. And now it's the go-to scale for talking about how dark are your skies really? And can you see the stars or are you looking at light pollution? Um, so here's an image of the, of the Bortle scale. Obviously Bortle scale one is excellent dark skies. And it goes all the way out to a Bortle 8 or a Bortle 9, where you're in the inner city or the city sky. The suburbs are almost just as bad appearing in red. So why are we talking about the Bortle scale and dark skies? Because you're going to need them to chase your next aurora. One of the easiest things you can do is look up a dark sky map on the internet, and then you'll come across all these different light pollution maps or dark sky maps, different resources that you can use. Um, <clears throat> many of them are free. Some of them include additional perks if you subscribe. But there's one that I really like that a lot of people are using now. It's called lightpollutionmap.info. So we're just going to type that URL into a search engine or your browser. And um, from what I've heard, this was actually created out in Europe. So we are going to end up in the wrong part of the world here. But as we start to zoom out, okay, I was mistaken. We actually landed pretty close to where I live, which is in Michigan. And I used to live in up in Minnesota and was originally uh, born and raised in Ohio. So from the Midwest and the Great Lakes region, for sure. I'm a Great Lakes girl. But here as we zoom out, we can see that we have the dark sky map for the United States, especially the lower 48 states of the U.S. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of great dark skies out in the West. If you travel West, um, we start to see some of that red light pollution along the Pacific coast in some of those urban areas. Um, in some of those high population areas. Now on the East Coast, there's a lot of large cities and population centers. So there's a lot of light pollution unless you start to get all the way up to the Northeast. Let's see. Let's see if we can find Maine on the map. It's, it's up here. And I can see Vermont and there's Montreal. Um, and down here is Boston. So you can sort of get a feel for what you're looking at. Now, how would you use the dark sky map when you're aurora chasing? Well, when you're aurora chasing, you really want to think about how dark are the skies near me? What kind of light pollution am I dealing with as I move around or look around or even walk out in my backyard to try to see the northern lights? Um, and how much is that going to affect the ability for me to be able to photograph the Northern Lights or even see them with the unaided eye in the dark? Um, as you can tell, as I sort of zoom around the state of Michigan, especially in the lower peninsula, we have a lot of large cities and urban centers in Southern Michigan, and then the skies start to get very dark in Northern Michigan, especially above the 45th parallel, which runs through Leland, Gaylord, and Alpena just about. So right through there, that's really a hot spot for Aurora activity around that parallel. Now the UP, I know what you wanna say. You wanna say it's not on the map. 
It is on the map, but Michigan's Upper Peninsula is actually so dark in many spots that the skies don't even register on a light pollution map because they are pristine, dark wilderness. Now, you're also going to have some tall trees while you're up there and some other obstacles to viewing the northern lights low on the northern horizon. But when it comes to viewing the stars, the Milky Way, and even the aurora, if it dances overhead, you can't go wrong with Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Now, this true for other areas too, like northern Minnesota, parts of northern Wisconsin. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to pick a random location where I want to chase the aurora, and I am going to uh, try to find a good spot to do so. Um, in Michigan, we have the Michigan Aurora Chasers, which is a group that is now over 80,000 members strong and probably quickly headed to 90,000 members. So when they hear about a dark sky spot, they all tend to gravitate toward the same place. So let's just say I'm going to take a road trip all the way up through northern Michigan, through the Upper Peninsula, on across Wisconsin and Minnesota to North Dakota, where the population centers might be big. But there's really not a lot of people living up there. All right, so I can kind of see North Dakota on the map. Here's the trick. All right, when you're aurora chasing, you want dark skies, right? But you're also looking north to try to find the lights. And when they're really subtle, they could appear low on the northern horizon. So you want a clear view to your north, especially when free of trees, maybe the south side of a north-facing lake, something that gives you a view where you can see as much as possible of the northern sky. Okay, so <clears throat> we think about light pollution and you may say, yeah, I live in a totally dark area or I'm traveling to a totally dark area. In fact, <laughs> let me see if I can find one here. The town of New England out here is perfectly dark skies, almost perfectly dark. They've got that nice purple color. They're nowhere near the red and orange population centers. Well, okay, they're kind of close to them, but it's dark here, right? I should be fine. The thing is though, you're going to be looking north. So the first thing you'll see looking north here is the city or small town, I should say, of Dickinson. And that registers red on the map, meaning there are is some serious light pollution there. Even worse, though, you're going to be looking directly north into. And you see, you can navigate around these maps and try to see exactly what you're looking at. Now, I wish I could see the name of the city a little bit more easily because I honestly don't know what it is off the top of my head. Um, but you get the point. Staring straight up into this huge urban area, you're not going to be able to see the northern lights. Instead, you're going to see this light, and it's going to look very pale yellow or stale orange, kind of lifeless and still on the northern horizon. Okay, later I will figure out what that city is, and then <laughs> it will all make sense. But what I'm going to do if I'm traveling out to northern North Dakota on a road trip is I'm going to avoid that spot altogether. And I'm going to use a tool like this, a light pollution map or a dark sky map to zoom in to any place that I feel like I'm comfortable traveling. And of course, you should probably know a few things about this place or about this area or even about your trip that will keep you safe on your journey. <clears throat> but I myself like to look for opportunities to chase the northern lights in parks. So let's say, okay, I'm already planning on driving to North Dakota through Minnesota. I don't want to stop in Minnesota. I want to get through Grand Forks and I want to keep on going west. And then I don't want to end up near any major cities. So I'm going to go beyond Devil's Lake. But I'm going to try to find an area to chase the Aurora in this section. The good news is there's no major red spots on the map to my north, except perhaps for Brandon up in Canada, but that's a pretty small city and it should be a small obstruction to the view. The nice thing about these maps is once you zoom in very, very close, you can start to see town names and streets and even street names or lake names. And if you really spend some time concentrating 
on your search, you can identify areas that might have potential. Now, the best thing to do when Aurora chasing is to scout out a location with full knowledge of what you're getting yourself into and what to expect while you're there. And then to look at it during the daylight so that you're completely prepared for anything you might come across. And maybe to also scout it out during the nighttime so that you know if there are street lights or other obstacles like that to overcome in the dark. All right, I can see here that there is the Turtle Mountain Indian Reservation. Um, that's got some light pollution, but it's also entering the north side of a green part of the map into the purple skies. So maybe if I zoom in over here by these lakes, Okay, now I can start to see there's green on the map here that may indicate a park. And what I'll do sometimes is I'll pull up a Google, Google map right alongside the dark sky map I'm looking at, and I'll compare some of the road signs in the neighborhoods and that sort of thing. And so here, as I zoom in, I can see, okay, what I need to do to get here is to take 24th Avenue Northeast is the road here that goes right alongside it. And there's a recreation area called the, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, the, let's just say it's the Butte St. Paul State Recreation Area. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's pronounced, but, but I see this recreation area and it's on the map. It's in the dark skies. It's got a huge green swatch on the map, meaning it's probably a park. There may not be any lakes for me to stand at near there, at least not that touch the park trails, but there are some good options nearby. And there's one of those lakes right there. So as I zoom out again, I can sort of check the area and I'll see that there will be light pollution to my east light pollution to my west, especially to the northwest, which might affect an over sky view if you're trying to see Aurora completely overhead. But to the north, the first obstacle I'm gonna run into is Brandon. And if we were all the way zoomed out, it's actually kind of a small blip on the map relative to most of the cities we see in the Midwest. So that spot right there, that recreation area hiding up at the top of North Dakota might be a good spot to go to watch the Northern Lights, especially if I scout it out during the daytime and then um, scout it out at night just to make sure there's no glaring street lamps. Now, you can do this in major population areas too. Um, I happen to reside in Ann Arbor, and that is a major problem with light pollution. Not only do we have the major metro area of Detroit, um, we also have Ann Arbor, and we also have red all around us. But in my experience, as someone who loves cities and who's lived near them for a long time, I have also found that on a during very strong conditions, it is possible to see the aurora from some of the yellow or orange areas on the map. You're just not going to have as great of an experience. So if I wanted to try to find a spot to sort of travel to around my own hometown, all I'd have to do is really kind of zoom in look at the road signs, identify some of the local parks, figure out what their open status is at night and some of the parking areas and other safety precautions. And voila, I might have a plan. So that is how you can use a dark sky map to your advantage. And I highly recommend it. Don't ask people to hand you viewing locations. Instead, do a little bit of homework, find somewhere close to you. You never know. It might end up being somewhere within 30 minutes driving distance of your home or right in your backyard. So I hope this helps. Um, certainly we want to make our dark skies darker or preserve the dark skies we do have. So thank you to all those who are making that effort. And as always, Good luck on the Aurora Chasing Trail.